Hi everybody, this is Tim, and this is What I Saw, When I Saw, The Shining. Much, much has been said about The Shining in the way of analysis and interpretation. Some people may argue too much has been said, and in this video I'm not going to add to all that analysis. Rather, similar to my other video about a scene in Blade Runner, I'd like to call your attention to elements of language and word choice. As with all the videos about movies I make, I'm not suggesting that what I see is the only way to see this movie, or that what I see reflects the intentions of the people who made the movie. Are you ready, Mr. Torrance? Yes. Let's begin. In a pivotal scene in The Shining, Jack Torrance is in the Gold Room, in some kind of illusion or fantasy, and a waiter bumps into him. The waiter is carrying a tray with several glasses of avocado, a cocktail made with eggs, sugar, and brandy. The waiter, apologizing, offers to clean off the stain in the gentleman's washroom. This incident doesn't visibly bother Jack Torrance. He doesn't fly off the handle or yell at the waiter. Jack seems to understand that this was just an accident. Completely unintentional. You might say, a momentary loss of muscular coordination. On the way to the washroom, Jack jovially calls the waiter, Jeevesy old boy. Jack is pretending to be British or upper class, one of all the best people who historically, we're told, were the clientele of the Overlook. But the fact that Jack Torrance claps the waiter on the back as if the waiter were his equal would be a sign to other people in the Gold Room that Jack Torrance is not upper class. And yet, calling a servant by something other than their given name is not unusual. My own great-grandmother, an Irish immigrant to the United States, was a domestic servant in Boston, and from what I've read in books, some people would call any male Irish servant Patty, and any female Irish servant Bridget. That is because as servants, they weren't considered people. Dehumanizing someone can allay one's conscience for treating them poorly. Inside the washroom, the waiter gets to work, patting down the stain with water. Appropriately, the waiter addresses Mr. Torrance as Sir. But then Jack says, What do they call you around here, Jeevesy? He wants to know the waiter's proper name. Perhaps Jack Torrance, sitting in the gold room, wants to imagine himself as the kind of magnanimous gentleman who knows all the hired help by name. He knows the bartender Lloyd by name, but we don't know for sure if that is indeed the bartender's name, or whether Jack Torrance calls him Lloyd as he would call any waiter Jeeves. We also don't know if Lloyd is a first name or a last name. Perhaps even Mr. Torrance doesn't know. So Jack is trying to make a personal connection with this waiter by knowing his name. Obligingly, the waiter identifies himself as Delbert Grady. Jack Torrance believes that he is addressing Mr. Grady, the former caretaker of the Overlook Hotel, who notoriously killed his wife and two daughters with an axe and then shot himself in the head. Jack tells the waiter that he recognizes his face from the newspapers, presumably from one of the scrapbooks of newspaper clippings that we see on Jack's desk as he writes. But, as superfans of this film will tell you, the former caretaker's name was Charles Grady. Mr. Ullman, at the start of the film, said so. And Ullman also noted that the two Grady children were of different ages, not identical twins, as Danny sees. So either Jack or Mr. Ullman are mistaken. We can't be certain. Uncertainty unsettles us. To feel secure and sane, 
We depend on knowing where we are, what time it is, what day it is, who we're talking to. Watch how uncertainty in language begins to creep into this scene. When Jack accuses Mr. Grady of having murdered his family, Grady responds, That's strange, sir. I don't have any recollection of that at all. Grady does not say, No, I did no such thing, or You're mistaken. As a servant, Grady has surely been trained not to contradict a guest or a gentleman, and instead to use softer language. Or perhaps Grady is subtly trying to disorient Jack Torrance by making him uncertain. A different kind of servant might have responded by saying, Are you quite sure about that, sir? Or, I'm afraid I cannot be of service to you in this area, sir. But instead, Grady tells Jack he has no recollection of having murdered his entire family. You'd think you would remember committing multiple murder. But perhaps Grady is using words that Jack Torrance has used when, in an alcoholic stupor, he did something bad to someone, to someone in his family. And when confronted with it, he replied, I don't have any recollection of that at all. Jack asserts, Mr. Grady, you were the caretaker here. To which Grady responds again with the soft language of a servant. I'm sorry to differ with you, sir. Adding with emphasis, but you are the caretaker. Note that Grady doesn't deny having been the caretaker. He merely asserts that at present, Jack Torrance is the caretaker. Then Grady extends the verb is, in the present tense, you are, into the present perfect tense. You've always been the caretaker. I should know, sir. I've always been here. The dynamic between the two characters has started to shift. A good servant would never pull rank like that on a guest. That is why the so-called upper classes find it so offensive when a servant talks back to them. That implies that the servant considers them their equal, or in some way, their inferior. Grady's statement that he's always been here sounds spooky, especially given the last scene in the movie, where we are left to wonder if Jack Torrance has always been at the Overlook. But what Grady is saying is not, on its face, unusual. For this particular off-season, Jack Torrance has indeed always been the caretaker. And when Grady says, I've always been here, the word always could mean any length of time. Grady may be saying that while other servants have come and gone, he has remained on staff, so he's always been here. The other thing Grady doesn't specify is where here is. I've always been here, which is yet another note of ambiguity and uncertainty that's disorienting, confusing, scary. Grady confronts Jack Torrance even further. Did you know, Mr. Torrance, that your son is attempting to bring an outside party into the situation? Did you know that? Note that Grady has gone from addressing Jack as Sir to using his proper name. Grady is being deferential by calling him Mr. Torrance. But how did he know what Jack's name was? Jack didn't introduce himself. This waiter just knows him. He knows something about Jack Torrance without telling Jack Torrance how he knows it. That is a display of power. Further, both Jack and Grady 
refuse to dignify other people in this situation by referring to them by their proper names. Grady refers to my wife and my daughters without ever saying what their names were. He calls Danny to Jack Torrance, your son. And Grady refers to Dick Halloran by his occupation and an ugly racist epithet. Even a butler, it seems, has someone to look down on. Jack Torrance tells Grady, it's his mother. He doesn't say, it's my wife, or it's Wendy. He does a similar thing with Lloyd. That is, he doesn't dignify his spouse by mentioning her name. He only calls her that bitch. The scene ends with Grady telling Jack a story about his wife and daughters and how he had to correct them. Notice Grady has gone back to addressing Jack as Sir, perhaps because Grady knows he has Jack Torrance where he wants him. Grady can go back to pretending that Jack is a gentleman, as if their awkward and uncomfortable confrontation never occurred. Perhaps it didn't. Perhaps what we see in this scene is only an internal conversation that Jack Torrance has with himself, when, through his own ability with The Shining, he realizes what Danny is doing, and he tells himself how to correct the situation. Interesting that the etymology of the word correct in Latin means to make straight. Later in the movie, Jack will try to correct his son Danny, but his path in doing so is anything but straight. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, have a look at similar videos of mine on this channel, and Happy Halloween!